Uh, back here with day 89, the, the last new video f um, for this section. Today we're looking at cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay. Day 88 was about cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. Obviously when we switch how these cross sections are, are divided, it's going to change the volume and it's going to have to change how we think about it. Now, if you are doing pretty well with the cross sections perpendicular to x, right, it shouldn't be too bad, okay? It also helps to think about um, revolving around the y-axis. Those kind of shifts in thinking will be important. So just to recap, if, if I was doing cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, right, I would do the integral from 0 to 3, and I just have to figure out the area of that shape times dx. And, you know, if it's a square, I, I know the distance, right? One of the sides of the square is top function minus bottom function. So I do top, top function minus bottom function quantity squared. Um, but let's, talk, let's take a look at this example here. So here's region R. Region R is bounded by the functions y equals 3x and y equals x squared. First thing you'd want to do is identify which one is 3x and which one is x squared. That should be pretty easy for you. Um, just looking at this thing, um, the linear one has got to be 3x. The, the one that's a parabola has to be x squared. So right away, I just want to write that in there just so when I'm looking at this later, I can figure it out. Uh, we don't have to worry about intersections because it's labeled for us. We label it 3, 9. Again, um, well, the, the first question they'd probably ask is for you to find the area of R. As we're doing all this crazy stuff, don't forget about the simple stuff like finding the area of a bounded region. Right? If I wanted to find the area of R, I would do the integral from 0 to 3 of 3x minus x squared. And I just hammer that thing out. If this was no calculator, they'd probably make you solve it out by hand. But again, not terrible, doable. We can figure it out. Um, what I'm sp specifically focusing on today is cross sections perpendicular to the y axis. So here's what they might say um, they might say region R is, a, uh, is the base. Of solid, of a solid, whose cross sections perpendicular to y axis are, um, I don't know, let's just do squares. Find volume. Just like um, cross sections perpendicular to the x, they can give you a variety of shapes. The ones that are most common are squares, rectangles, uh, right triangles with a leg in the isosceles right triangles with a leg in the in the plane, and semicircles. I'm just going to do an, an easy example with squares here, and you know let the let the other day 88 video explain for some of the other shapes or come up with those on your own. Okay. So whenever they tell you region R is the base of a solid, it's very, very important that you are paying attention to what those cross sections are perpendicular to. In yesterday's video, they are always perpendicular to the x-axis. In the homework from, from today, they were all perpendicular to the x-axis. Now we have perpendicular to the y-axis. When you're reading this problem, you really need to notice that these things are perpendicular to the y-axis. So if we think about these, okay, here's the y-axis, right? Perpendicular to the y-axis would be running this way. Okay? And again, that's the base of the square, and the square pops up out of the page. It's kind of hard to draw. But I'll try, let me see how I want to do this. Okay. So there is that square popping up. 
The first thing you should notice is this is no longer top function minus bottom function. Because we're perpendicular to the y-axis, we're going to have to think of this in a new way. Also, just like when we revolved around the y-axis, um, we had to change our limits of integration, right? If I revolved r around the x-axis, my integral would go 0 to 3. But if I re revolve around the y-axis, I'd have to do the integral from 0 to 9. Okay? Same thing, same change is going to be here. What I want to do is I want to figure out what is this distance. Because once I know that distance, I also know the height, and I can multiply them together to get the area of the shape. Okay? Instead of doing top function minus bottom function, I need to do right minus left. But, so that's, that's a big difference. I need to do right minus left, but both must be solved for x. I need an x equals for my right function, and I need an x equals for my uh, left function. Okay? So the actual things I'm going to be integrating here are going to be in terms of y. So the first thing I want to do is I want to solve these two equations for x. Well, they're pretty simple to solve. If y equals x squared, then x would equal root y. So my right function here is root y. My left function here would be, I would divide by 3 on both of them, and I'd get x equals 1 third y. You could also put y over 3. It's the same thing. Okay, so to get that distance, I have to do right function minus left function. Okay, that's the big difference. So I need to solve. And by the way, when you see these region problems, when they put it in terms of y equals for both functions, just be aware you're probably going to have to do that at some point in time in, in the process. Okay. Second thing I have to do that's different, I integrate... When I do my integral, I go from bottom y value to top y value. Okay, so that's just like how when we're revolving around the y-axis. So that shouldn't be totally foreign to us. Um, just look back to the revolving around the y-axis video. Okay. So, if I want uh, to figure out what this volume is going to be, here's what it's going to be. Here's going to be my answer. The volume is going to be the integral from the bottom intersection, right? This intersection right here is 0, 0. So, I want that y value, which is 0, to the top y value, which is 9, right? I'm stacking up these squares all the way up to a height of 9. So, I go integral 0 to 9. Of, of now I have to do the area of the square. Well, this distance right here is right minus left. Let me just draw a square. This distance right here is the y function on the right, which is root y, minus the left function, which is one third y. But that's also the height. So all I need to do is do the area of that times, and instead of doing dx, I'm going to use dy, because my functions are in terms of y now. So the, the answer here would be, the volume would be the integral from 0 to 9 of right function minus left function quantity squared dy. Okay. And if they asked us to solve that, you know, by hand, right, might be a little bit difficult. We could expand that binomial, right? Uh, it, you know, but if it's on a calculator, sometimes people are like, "Well, wait, wait where's the y button?" Right? You can just put it. You can just enter it in terms of everything in terms of x. Okay. So don't forget to adjust your limits of integration to be from bottom to top instead of left to right.
Don't forget to solve your functions for x equals, and then we do right minus left for that distance instead of top minus bottom. And then um, dy instead of dx. All right, that's it for today. We'll have um, some practice problems with this as well as just general review from this whole unit tomorrow in class. Talk to you guys later. Two chains. Bye. Go 5278.